Hello, orchid friends. It's time for the ugly truth. No, I'm just kidding. At least to a certain extent, you will see what I mean. Recently, a lot has been said on YouTube about a certain fertilizer causing root burn. And it surprised me a bit because I have to admit that I always had quite some root burn with different brands of fertilizers with completely different compositions of minerals and nutrients. And to be honest, before the discussion started on YouTube, I had not considered root burn on my orchids as a problem that needed to be solved. And I still feel no need to change very much, but I feel motivated to focus a little bit more on the prevention of root burn in the future, for the sake of the look of my orchids. I'd like to show you the extent of root burn that has developed long term on my windowsill orchids in a dry setup. It really is one of the downsides of my lazy watering and I'd like to talk a bit about my explanation why that is. I'm not very well versed in chemistry. Also I really have no idea how much root burn I have compared to others. But I got the feeling that it's quite much although it didn't bother me too much all the time. But people might throw their hands up in horror when they see it. I don't know. If you don't like the look of burned roots, welcome to the club. I definitely understand that and I don't like the look either. I love shiny new roots, plain white with a green or a purple tip. I would rather keep them like this, but since I'm such a low effort kind of person, I'm not sure if that's easily achievable for me. Luckily it doesn't seem to impair their function very much. If a plant is healthy all in all, it's not the first thing you'll notice when you look at her. And if a burned root stops growing, it usually starts growing again at some point. The orchids you see in this video haven't been reported for up to 5 years and at least 1.5 to 2 years. You'll see footage of my worst root burn cases. Not all my orchids look like the ones you see. It depends very much on how sensitive the orchids are and if I wanted to push them to their limits or not. But mainly it's just a natural phenomenon. Here is my explanation for all the root burn. Root burn on my orchids is always limited to surface roots and on them I consider root burn to be normal or natural. Fertilizer that dries before it can be absorbed by the roots, crystallizes and in its crystallized form, fertilizer is hypertonic and therefore hygroscopic and likely that is how it damages the roots. The fertilizer in this jar was incredibly hygroscopic, that means water attracting. It was powdered fertilizer that sat in a leaky jar in my bathroom for a few weeks. It attracted so much water out of the air that it liquefied Imagine this powder on sensitive root tips. It dehydrates and damages the cells by osmosis following the second law of thermodynamics. That is exactly what happens when fertilizer remains on exposed orchid roots when the water evaporates. The second the water starts to evaporate, the TDS value in the remaining water on the root starts to rise until there is no water left. In a greenhouse with high humidity, flushing and misting and keeping the roots moist, there is less such a thing. And it doesn't happen to roots that are buried inside the pot either. They are kept moist much longer, so long that they are able to absorb most of the fertilizer and therefore won't burn. If you power fertilized water on exposed root tips on the surface that dry in no time, they will likely burn because they are the most sensitive part of the root. When I water from above with a spray bottle, that's usually pure osmosis water just for hydration. There are a few practices that I consider being useful to prevent that the fertilizer crystallizes before the orchid is able to absorb it either trying to keep the roots moist longer until the roots have absorbed most of it. For that I sometimes put a layer of sphagnum moss on top of my pots. That seems to help and new roots like the extra bit of moisture. This layer can be moistened every now and then independently from my regular watering. Or using less fertilizer and maybe fertilize more often to compensate that could be useful. 
or a little bit of both. I've read that one can also hydrate the roots first and water them with fertilized water afterwards. But that would mean watering them twice and that's not going to happen for me since watering them once is enough of a hassle for me already. Watering is not my favorite thing to do. But I think it could be helpful to spray with pure reverse osmosis water or rain water or distilled water on the surface roots after fertilizing to reduce the amount of fertilizer remaining on them that would crystallize when the roots dry. And I get the feeling there should be more root growth inside the pot and nothing is happening for a long time. I soak the pot in reverse osmosis water and sometimes that helps and new roots emerge. It's nothing that I used to do frequently and since there is no or not much root burn inside the pots I think it's a combination of salts, pH and maybe chemical compounds that accumulate in the pots and that inhibit root growth there. A few words on my setup. I keep most of my orchids, that means mostly felts and cattleyas and vandas, on or in case of the vandas hanging above my windowsill, that is a south facing windowsill. I don't use artificial lighting and I went without any shading this year as an experiment. I live in Central Europe. During summer time temperatures can rise to 32 degrees Celsius in this room or 90 degrees Fahrenheit but usually temperatures are between 17 degrees Celsius or 62 degrees Fahrenheit during nighttime in winter and 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit during daytime in summer. The humidity is heavily dependent on different factors of course, but with those temperatures in my home, in my climate, with my habit of opening the windows mostly twice a day, with all the plants in here and so on, my humidity ranges between 50 and 75% but mostly settles at about 60-65%. to 65%. More humidity would be nice for the plants but could cause mold and less humidity would be stress for the orchids. For me that's quite good as it is. For the most part of the year I water my orchids every 7-10 to 10 days, sometimes every 2 weeks depending on their needs and also on my limited time. In winter I have to water them even less. But that doesn't mean I ignore them the rest of the time. I look at them a lot and if I have the feeling that one of them is suffering from drought, she doesn't have to wait until the others get watered again. But I take a pumping spray bottle with mostly reverse osmosis water and give her some additional water from above. It depends on the pot size and the medium if that happens. I mostly use bark medium, sometimes mixed with a bit sphagnum moss, sometimes with a layer of sphagnum moss or rarely pure sphagnum moss. I use reverse osmosis water mixed with a bit of tap water and of course fertilizer. Since I'm not particularly well versed in the fertilizer topic, I basically thought nitrogen is for growing leaves and pseudobulbs, calcium helps forming strong growths, phosphorus and potassium are for root growth and flowers. This doesn't seem to be quite right, at least the nitrogen thing. There is always room for improvement though. The American Orchid Society for example recommends a balanced fertilizer for cattleyas when they are growing and states a high nitrogen fertilizer is not necessary. I've just started to experiment with feeding my cattleyas heavily when they are actively growing. I'm not sure what's the best way to go for me yet, but I keep the balanced fertilizer in mind. I doubt there were many new information on the topic in this video, especially for those of you who have dealt with the topic before. But at least you've seen now how I handle things on my windowsill. I promise to take care more of my roots in the future. I hope those of you who have never experienced root burn won't do so in the future and those who have will be able to fix their problems soon. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, happy growing! Bye bye!